how to move or copy actors from a sublevel into another one with C++ in Unreal. Because it happens that sometimes you're spawning actor in a world but it ends up in the wrong sublevel and you don't want to have to destroy the actor and respawn it, you just want to be able to move it from a level to the other one and that's why we're going to look at it today, so let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code that we wrote in video 16 of the series, so I recommend to go see that one, but if you don't want to, here is the code. So as usual, header file with only one function today so the move or copy actors to sublevel function we're going to use that same function to either move actors or copy actors into another level because the logic is going to be pretty similar so why not reusing the same function so move or copy actors to sublevel you have a bunch of actors inside the level one for example and you want to move them into the level three or copy them into the level three this function is going to do those actions for you so here we have the list of all the actors that you want to move or copy into the other level you can have one actor or ten 10,000 of them, it's going to be the same result. So this is the list of all the actors that you want to move or copy, and then you have the name in which you want to place those actors. So do you want to copy them inside the level three, move them inside the level four, or things like that. So here is where you're going to specify in which level you want to move or copy those actors. And finally, we have the small little boolean right here, which is going to decide if you want to copy the actor or move them. If this boolean is true, it's going to copy the actors inside the second level, otherwise it's simply going to move them. And actually, that's that's about it for the other file, now it's time to jump in the CPP. And here as usual we're going to start with the includes and the first include today is going to be the code of the video 16 of the series. So here it is, I have my code that was written in the previous video and what we're going to do with that code is simply find the level in which we want to move or copy the actors because we have a sublevel name right here. From that name we're going to retrieve the level object in which we want to place the actors. So the code of the previous video is going to give us that level and then the second include that we need is going to be the editor level utils. In that class we have access to a bunch of different functions that let us easily affect actors that are inside levels in the editor. So what we're going to do is simply use those functions because they are already there. So why not using them? So we're going to include the editor level utils, which is inside the Unreal ED module. So we have to make sure that the Unreal ED module is already included in the build.cs file. And we can see that I already have it right here. So I don't have to change anything in there. But if you don't have it, you have to include it. Otherwise, it's not going to compile perfect. Now it's time to go back in the CPP, scroll down a little bit and focus on the function. And here the first step is actually going to be to validate the actors that we're going to try to move inside the levels because if we don't have any valid actors to move well we're not going to do it. So here I'm just going to remove all the null pointer in the array that way if I have a few empty spaces in there they are just going to be removed. So here I'm just going to clean the array a little bit and if after clearing the array I have zero actor left in the array I'm not going to do anything because well I don't have any actor to move inside the other level. So right here I'm just going to return right away I'm going to return false. I was not able to move the actor into the other sublevel because well I don't have any actors to move none of the actors that are in the array are valid or the array is just empty period so I'm not going to be able to move those actors because well I don't have any actors to move so as simple as that I'm just going to validate to make sure that all my actors are valid and then now that I know that I have at least one actor to move inside the sublevel well it's time to do it but first we have to find the well that we're currently using and also the level in which we want to place the actor and that's why we're going to reuse some code that we wrote in the previous video but first uh, let's find the world the, the world is going to be the world of any of the actors that are currently in the list because we're assuming that all the actors that you receive as input are from the same world that just probably going to be the case anyway you're not going to have multiple worlds loaded at the same time most likely you can have it but whatever let's say that you don't and all the actors that we receive as input are part of the same world which is probably going to be the case for 99% of you anyway so good let's get any of the actors that are in the list and get its world that's going to be the world we're going to use today. And now from that world, we have to find in which level we want to move the actor. So using the sublevel name right here, we're going to reuse the code from the get sublevel from world. So that function right here, we just have to feed it the world and also the sublevel name. And that's going to return you the sublevel that has that level name, as simple as that. So you have the sublevel in which you want to move the actor right here. I'm just going to make sure that this sublevel is valid because if it's not valid, I'm not going to be able to move any actor inside that level, obviously. So here, if it's null, I'm simply going to return 
pattern right away. But otherwise, it means that we have a valid sublevel and we have a valid list of actors that we want to move, and it's time to move them inside that level. But first, I'm just going to create myself a little variable right here, an integer, just to keep track of how many actors I was able to move or copy during the process. Because if you had, let's say, 10 actors that you wanted to move during the process and the process was only able to move five of them, well, there's a problem there. So we're going to be able to return an error or warning to the user to tell him, hey, 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 not all of the actors were processed properly. So please look at those. It's not going to be that detailed today, but at least I want to be able to return if the process was a complete success or if it failed or if it was not able to process all the actors that were requested. So here, that's the variable we're going to use to return some information to the user. If you don't want to do that, well, you don't need that variable, obviously. So, okay, that variable, we're going to use it to return some information. And now it's time to do the actual process. So that's what we're going to do right here. If we wanted to copy the actors, no, not move them, just copy the actors, we're simply going to call the copy actors to level function that is inside the editor level utils. So it's super simple. You just have to copy the actors to another level. You feed it the actors that you want to copy. And you also feed it the level in which you want to copy the actor. And that's it. The function is going to copy those actors for you. And it's going to tell you how many actors were processed properly. So then you're going to know if the process worked properly or not. And actually that was for the copy actor, but now we want to also support the move because that's the name of the function, move or copy. So if we didn't want to copy the actor, well, in that case, I'm simply going to call the move actors to level function as simple as that. They are actually pretty much the same function. So it works exactly the same way. You just have to feed it the actors that you want to move and also the sub level in which you want to move those actor. And as output is going to return you how many actors were moved inside the other level properly. And that's it. That's as simple as that. I can now just return if the process was a success using the amount of actors that were processed properly. If it's equal to the amount of actor I wanted to process originally, well, it means that it was a success. But if it's not equal, well, there was a problem somewhere. You can show a warning, you can show an error, you can do whatever you want. I'm not going to do it today. But if you want to, well, you can. But in my case, I'm just going to return if it was a success or a fail if the amount of actors that were processed is equal to the amount of actor I wanted to process. And that's it. So here I'm just going to see if it was a success or not and that's it. Now it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. So in Unreal, I created myself one new level, one new test scene that we're going to use today. So we have a world right here and inside that world, we have the sub level. So you can see that on the left right here in the level list. So I have my persistent and also have my sub level right under it. And if I hide my sub level, it doesn't change anything because there's nothing in my sub level right now. If I just show my sub level, you can see that the hierarchy doesn't change. I don't have anything in my sub level right now. What we're going to do is move all the cubes, all the static meshes that are inside the persistent level. We're going to move them inside the sub level and we're going to do that using the code that we wrote today. So I'm going to go in my user interface right here. Right here we have a little text box to decide in which level we want to move or copy the actors. We have a checkbox to decide if we want to copy or move the actors. And finally we have a big button that if we click on it it's going to either move or copy the actors depending on our settings. And if I go in the graph that's exactly what it does right here. It's calling our new function that we created today the move or copy actors to sub level or the actors list. I decided to keep it simple today so I'm simply going to do a get all actor of class. Uh, the class I decided to use is the set sick mesh actor because we want to see something. So let's move some meshes around. So what we're going to do is get all the set sick mesh actors that are visible in the editor right now and move them into another sub level using our new function. So take all the actors from the world, feed them into the new function. We're also going to tell it in which level we want to move or copy those actors using the path that we have in the user interface. And also the result of the checkbox is going to decide if we want to copy the actor or move them. Perfect. So that's it for the code. Now I'm just going to go open my user interface uh, right Right here. Here we go. Scroll all the way to the bottom. And now my text component is set to my sub level. So if I click on the move or copy actors, it should move all the set mesh actor from the persistent because they are now all in the persistent into the sub level. So let's click on this and we can see that, okay, something happened. We don't really know what yet, but it looks like something happened and it says that it succeeded. So we'll see if it worked actually. So I'm just going to hide my persistent level and we can see that all my meshes are still visible in the hierarchy right here because they are now inside the sub level. Actually, we don't see much because my scene doesn't have any lighting anymore. So I'm just going to go in unlit mode. Here we go. Now we can see that I have all my little static meshes directly inside my sub level that I have right here. If I end my sub level, I don't have any meshes. If I show the persistent without my sub level, we can see in my hierarchy on the right that I don't have any meshes anymore in my persistent level because I took all the static mesh actor and moved them inside the sub level. So good, it seemed to work. But now the last test will be to see if we are able to copy the actors back into the persistent level. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go get the level name of my persistent level. 
level right here. I'm going to replace my level name that I have right here in my user interface and I'm going to check the copy checkbox. Now it should take all the set sigma shaktor that are inside my sub level and copy them into the persistent level. We can see in the hierarchy that my amount of set sigma just doubled because it copied everything. That's good. But did it copy them in the right level? We'll see. I'm going to hide my sub level and we can see that inside my persistent level I still have a bunch of static mesh actors that's pretty good and if I hide my persistent level and show my sub level again we can see that the static mesh actors are still there so they were properly copied inside the persistent level so good now you know how to copy or move actors between different levels so I guess that's gonna be it for today's video and I'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye